welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana <coughs> vishvesham satchidanandam वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया so far we have studied the theory of compounding in detail in this particular course the focus of this course is the study of the three types of samasas avyayi bhav bahuvrihi and dvandva as stated in the paninian grammar before studying the specifics of these three samasas it is imperative for us to study the background in the form of the theory of compounding which is applicable to all these three we studied the theory called samartha theory we also studied the primary sources namely the samarthanika which is part of the vyakarana mahabhashya composed by patanjali around 150 bce we noted down that there are four meanings proposed by patanjali and they apply to the two explanations of the samarthya namely ekarthi bhava and vyapeksha we said that sangatartha and samsrishtartha are the two meanings which explain ekarthi bhava and sambaddhartha and samprekshitartha are the two meanings which explain the vyapeksha lakshana samarthya we concluded there that vyapeksha lakshana samarthya is the base of the process of compounding where two or more elements are primarily semantically interrelated we also said that this interrelation could be of several kinds we have noted them down but we concluded that this interrelation requires the karaka system to have applied so we said that the samartha theory is based on the karaka theory in general we also said that the samasas are based on the sentence the input for a samasa is a sentence in other words padas which are constituents of the sentence are the input of the samasa and the output generated is a pratipadika or a nominal root which then in its turn becomes the input for the processing of the sentence we also studied the exceptions 
to the samartha theory in the form of the asamartha samasas that are also visible in the corpus of sanskrit texts then we also studied the concept of nitya samasa and what is not a nitya samasa we noted that nitya samasa is explained in two ways a vigraha as well as a swapada vigraha we studied the examples of all the four types of samasas which are nitya samasas namely tatpurusha this we have already studied in detail in the first course and we also studied the examples of avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva nitya samasas now we need to study the steps in the process of compounding how the compound derivation process progresses that is the topic of this particular lecture as we have already said for the derivation of a samasa input is a sentence in other words input is the interrelated padas which are part of a sentence and the output is the nominal root or the pratipadika now the question is what happens before what happens in between and how is this governed by rules these are the three very important questions answers to which will explain the process of compounding as described by paninian grammar as well as the paninian grammatical tradition let us first of all look at the first question what happens before that is what happens before the sentence becomes the input and we go to the cognitive stage and we following the paninia shiksha which describes the process of speech production which we have already studied in the previous lectures we say that the speaker collects the meanings which are stored in the space of meanings namely arthakasha as independent and separate items in a merged manner so the meanings are stored in independent and separate manner and they are merged in the arthakasha itself and then such a merged meaning is also stored in this arthakasha then the speaker selects words from the space of shabdas also known as shabdakasha which express these merged meanings and this is the cognitive stage which is a prerequisite of the process of compounding after this happens at the cognitive stage the next process starts so the next question is when does the process of compounding start for example if we have the meaning collected together in this particular form ram and lakshman together go to kashi so ram and lakshman they were stored in the arthakasha independently and separately now they are brought together in the arthakasha and they are merged together and now in this particular meaning the entire sentence is present and now words are selected from the shabdakasha which express these meanings 
So in order to express the meanings Ram and Lakshman, Ramaha, Lakshmanascha, these are the individual separate words which are stored in the Shabda Kasha are selected. And the sentence is also selected in order to express this particular meanings. We can explain this once again by saying that the speaker intends to merge the meanings Ram and Lakshman and then marks the words in the sentence and then converts them into technical elements. This is also recorded as a rule by Panini in the Ashtadhyayi. In this particular case, the rule is Charthe Dvandvaha, which we shall study in detail when we study the Dvandva Samasa in this particular course ahead. The Sutra Charthe Dvandvaha is 2.2.29 in the Ashtadhyayi. What this sutra means is that in the sense of togetherness and also a group which are the meanings of the particle ch, interrelated subs get compounded and that compound is called dvandva compound. This sutra charthe dvandvaha is the rule based support in this particular process of compounding of Ram and Lakshmana. So now Ramaha, Lakshmanascha are converted into the technical elements. And so we have Rama plus Su plus Lakshmana plus Su. Cha disappears. Cha has no place as far as the form of the compound is concerned. And so, we have only Rama plus Su and Lakshmana plus Su. It is the process of compounding which indicates the meaning denoted by Ch, which is and, which is together. Now, when we do Rama plus Su and Lakshmana plus Su, which is a conversion of Ramaha and Lakshmanaha, which is a rewriting of Ramaha and Lakshmanaha, this is called a Laukika Vigraha. Ramaha Lakshmanascha is the Laukika Vigraha of the Samasa Rama Lakshmana. This is called Laukika Vigraha primarily because the dissolution or Vigraha involves the two words that are actually spoken by the speakers of Sanskrit. So this is called Laukika Vigraha. But when this Laukika Vigraha is transformed into the technical elements, namely Rama plus Su plus Lakshmana plus Su, this involves a Prakriti and Pratyaya structure. Rama and Lakshmana are the Prakritis and Su is the Pratyaya. To be more specific, Rama and Lakshmana are the Pratipadika types of Prakritis and Su is the Sup Pratyaya which is added to them which makes them Padas fit to be part of a sentence and to become eligible for the process of compounding. Now, although Ramaha Lakshmanascha is part of the usage of the speaker of Sanskrit, Rama plus Su and Lakshmana plus Su as it is, is not part of the usage of the speaker of Sanskrit. The speaker of Sanskrit only uses Ramaha Lakshmanascha. The speaker of Sanskrit never uses Rama plus Su and Lakshmana plus Su in this particular manner in composing a sentence. And that is the reason why it is called Alaukika 
विग्रह इट इज इन फैक्ट अ डिजोल्यूशन बट इट इज नॉट यूज इन द लोक इट इज नॉट यूज बाय द स्पीकर सो दिस इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड अलौकिक विग्रह वन थिंग टू बी रिमेंबर्ड ओवर हियर इज दैट द अलौकिक विग्रह ऑलवेज करस्पॉन्ड्स विद द लौकिक विग्रह so this is called alaukik vigrah primarily because this is a dissolution or vigrah which is not used in the usage by the speakers of sanskrit and also this corresponds with the dissolution that is used by the speakers of sanskrit which is known as laukik vigrah this alaukika vigraha is by default considered to be the beginning of the process of deriving a compound this is extremely important i repeat this alaukika vigraha is by default considered to be the beginning of the process of deriving a compound until the final output is generated after the entire process and that is the reason why the brackets are put right here at the stage of alaukika vigraha and therefore the suffixes that are added if at all at the end of the compound which are known as samasanta suffixes if at all they are to be added they get added over here in the alaukika vigraha now in case of the present vigraha ramaha lakshmanascha whose alaukika vigraha is ramas plus su plus lakshmana plus su there is no such samasanta suffix added by the speaker of sanskrit and not noted by the grammar grammar of samskrit so we move ahead now there is one more important feature of this alaukika vigraha this bracket is termed as pratipadika because this bracket itself is first termed as samasa and therefore then it is immediately termed as pratipadika once this is done then the order of the words in the finally derived output is determined which pada will occupy which position the first position or the second position or the last position is what is determined in this particular stage which word occupies the first position in the compound and which one occupies the second position and which one occupies the final position in the compound is determined at this particular stage there is a separate mechanism in order to decide about this particular feature which we shall also talk about little later but for the time being when we talk about the dvandva compound where both the words both the constituents are mentioned in the same vibhakti we don't have a particular clue as to which word of occurs in the first position and which one occurs in the second position and therefore panini has written down a separate set of rules to denote which word occupies the first position and which one occupies the second position and this section is 2230 up to 2238 the word in the initial position of compound is termed purvapada 
and the word in the final position of the compound is termed Uttarapada. Now in the present case, because the Rama consists of only two vowels than Lakshmana which consists of three vowels, the Sutra Alpachtaram comes into play and decides that Rama will occupy the first position of this Dvandva Samasa and Lakshmana will occupy the second position of this Dvandva Samasa. So then we decide the order and write the Alaukika Vigraha in this particular fashion Rama plus Su plus Lakshmana plus Su in which now Ramaha in the Laukika Vigraha and Rama plus Su in the Alaukika Vigraha is considered to be Purva Pada and Lakshmana plus Su is termed as Uttara Pada. Now, since this is a Pratipadika, the next process happens. The Sups in both the Purva Pada and the Uttara Pada are deleted. This is an extremely important process, the deletion of the Sups. Both the Sups in the Purva Pada and Uttara Pada are deleted by the Sutra 2471 which is Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. And then we get Rama plus 0 plus Lakshmana plus 0. And then we have Rama plus Lakshmana remaining which we then combine and then make it Rama Lakshmana as the Pratipadika. It is extremely important to note that the sups in the process are deleted. It is these sups which become the input. It is these sups which gave the status of Pada to Rama and Lakshmana. And therefore, these sups can be said to be providing the sentential context. And because these sups were interrelated, the two Padas are said to be Samarthas, which is the very basic condition for the process of compounding to begin. And then the process began. Now, by deleting these Sups, the Paninian grammatical tradition and the gram grammatical theory is hiding or deleting the sentential context in a particular manner. This will reflect in the difference of Samasa and Vakya which was also stated explicitly by Patanjali in his Vyakarana Mahabhashya in the chapter Samarthanika which we studied earlier when Patanjali said Sankhya Visheshaha Vyakta Vidhanam Yatheshtam Anyatarena Bhisambandhaha and Swaraha and so on and so forth. So the sentential context is now deleted and that is an extremely important step in the process of compounding. That also shows the similarity of the Samasa and also the sentence which is the base of Samasa. Once the sups are deleted by 2471, Supo which means that the sups which are part of the Pratipatika are deleted, then the operations take place on the Purvapada in the environment of the Uttarapada following. These are stated in Ashtadhyayi 
6.3 which is governed by the adhikara uttara pade which means that when the uttara pade follows the modifications happen in the purva pade and these modifications are of various kinds addition of certain elements vowels or deletion of certain vowels etc are done on the purva pade and we shall study them ahead now in the present case where we are studying the dvandva samasa and its derivation no such operation is stated so we still have rama plus lakshmana as as the next step derived in the process of the derivation of this particular dvandva samasa we then move ahead and we have operations that occur at the end these are of the nature of operations based on phonological features akin to sandhi rules which generally happen at this particular level in the present case of the derivation of the dvandva samasa no such specific rule applies and so we still get rama and lakshmana as the output generated so we have rama plus lakshmana finally we get rama lakshmana as one output as one unit now we do not write these two elements separate using a space now we use them in a joined manner and we put brackets out of both these elements so this is one compounded word denoting one compounded meaning namely ram and lakshman together with both ram and lakshman acting as the heads of the compound to be linked with other words in the sentence together after merging the meaning as well as the word form the accent of the separate words is also merged and finally we get rama lakshmana the accent at the end by the by default sutra samasasya and this is the finally derived compound output this is the end of the derivation of a compound so we began at the cognitive stage and now we arrived at the end of the derivation of a compound in the form of a pratipadika together with the accent after we derive this compound what happens next that is an interesting question since rama lakshmana is a pratipadika or a nominal root relevant sup is added to it now since rama lakshmana together is acting as the kartru or agent of the action of going denoted by the verbal root gam and since the suffix taha denotes kartru rama lakshmana is added with the first triplet of sup also known as prathama vibhakti which matches with taha in number so we have rama lakshmana plus au which is the dual suffix which matches with taha and this dual suffix matches with the two members of the samasa and so we have rama lakshmana plus au plus gama plus taha and then the sentence derivation continues and we get rama lakshmana ugachataha as a sentence 
consisting of two padas. The accent of Ramalakshmanau is also mentioned here and the accent of Gachataha, separate pada, is also mentioned here. Now once these two padas come into contact and one sentence unit is generated, the sentential context also generates a modified accent and that is Ramalakshmanau Gachataha. And so this is the accent generated, this is the sentence generated. Let us take a recap of the stages of derivation described in this particular lecture. There is cognitive stage that was described which we also describe as sangraha, collection of meanings. Then we have alaukika vigraha. Then we have samasa saudhnya taking place. Then purvapada nirdharana happens. Then samasanta pratyaya gets added. Then we have an extremely important process called sub look where subs are deleted following the purvapada karya as well as the varna karya and finally the swara karya the operations of accent so these are the steps these are the stages of derivation of the samasa we noted that in the dvandva samasa some of these stages did not yield a different output. But when we studied the Bahuvrihi Samasa as well as the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, we may, we may get the different outputs at all these different stages and we shall study them in detail in the course of the study of these Samasas. To summarize, the derivation process of compound begins at the cognitive stage and actually it ends in the cognitive stage only. The process described in the grammar states the processes that happen at the cognitive level. The processes that we do on paper as well as digitally, we showed those processes earlier, they are representation of these cognitive processes. By default, these processes are followed and they are expressed using various means. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.